Yo, 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 guys, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> we have joining us today the one, the only Helena McConnell. She is uh, looking glorious without makeup, as I'm sure you will all let her know in the comments. <laughs> um, and we also have with us the student of the hour, Alona something Russian, Ukrainian. <laughs> What's your last name? Miroyanka. Yeah, yeah, that, Mir yeah, yeah, Miryanka. We love Miryanka here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. We are going to be doing some cash game tutorials. We're going to be teaching Lona, who is a tournament player, how to play cash game. The reason for that, as people should know already, uh, is because if you want to crush tournaments, you need to be able to crush host flop. And it's really hard to get much practice when we're playing post lock. Uh, sorry, when we're playing tournaments to play post lock. So one question I had, how much of my words right now, because I know there's a language barrier between us, how much of my words can you understand when I'm speaking this quickly? Me, I understand everything. Jesus Christ, yes. Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that at all. If, if there are no like, uh, hard words, which I never heard before, it's okay, you can't. Okay, I use simple words for you. We're good. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Alona has been in the Charlie's Charmander's group, kind of injected in there to try and get Helena some female company. Um, unfortunately, Helena is not the kind of person to reach out and be like, hey, let's do something together. So I'm <laughs> still trying to force them together. Still trying to just like make them friends. Um, so yeah, I'm actually, I've been meaning to speak to you. I, I've been trying to convince you. I was going to try and convince you to go to Ukraine. Yeah, it's just have like a grindhouse. Oh, man, that would be amazing. Yeah? Yeah, because when you try to walk into a grindhouse with male strangers, it felt really weird. I don't know why you wouldn't want to live in a house of just six dudes. Yeah. It's, just, it's so calming and relaxing. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, we it's are... Going... Doesn't, that me, doesn't that my request to friends on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, I will. Do it right Wait, you sent her a request and she didn't accept? Wait, I didn't Oh my god, caught red-handed, guys. This is not something I wanted on air, but my gosh, it's being published. Brutal, Hannah, brutal. Okay, well, that, that friendship can still be saved um, <laughs> with just a simple couple of weeks grinding in Ukraine. Yeah. Could be cool, yeah. Let's do it. Um, so we are going to be going through some 9 max footage. Elena has... Elena, Elena has never... Um, how the fuck do you share screen? This is Zoom, Zoom is fucking up. Um, it's usually up here, isn't it? Uh, maybe there? No. Maybe up here? Pause. Start share. All right, we got it. Okay, maybe it's just changed a bit. Um, has She's never played any cash games before. She's only played tournaments. I, I actually don't know what kind of success you've had in tournaments. Uh, you said you've ran good, generally. So, uh, what 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 buying tournaments do you usually play? Uh, I play three to five dollars. Three to five dollars. That's like sixty thousand Ukrainian monies or something like twenty thousand ruples. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. Okay. Share. Oh, wait. Wait. Where did we just find it? Bear with me, guys. Meaning, start share. Okay. Huzzah! Sweet. My playlist, by the way. <laughs> Look at all the followers. I'm such a popular musician. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Uh, we can actually play on double speed if, if need be. Yeah. Uh, okay, so first of all, we're min opening, blind versus blind. Why are we doing that? Uh, why? Yeah. Because we have a good hand. <laughs> Wait, what? Have you got a better microphone, by the way? Better? Yeah. Mm, you might, you, your settings might have a, a different yeah, microphone. Yeah, this one, I think. Oh, yeah, that's way better. Yeah, yeah it was just... 
Yeah, um, you, you hope when you're going to have coaching sessions with Twitch streamers, they might already know this stuff, but <laughs> sure. Okay, so we, we open in the blind versus blind because it's a good hand. If it was like uh, two, three or four, five, I would just empty. But why are we making it the minimum amount to go? Why are we making it four cents instead of five or six? Uh, I don't know. I never thought about it. Yeah. Okay. So one one thing that people don't really uh, get when they first start playing poker is that you need to be opening different sizes in different situations. You can probably get away with just like 2.2xing every single position apart from the small blind. And uh, the small blind is something you want to be probably usually 3xing until you start getting very short stack, like 25 to 30 big blinds. Um, so in cash games especially, you want to be 3xing. Uh, just so, so you know. You can get away with minimum, minimum, uh, minimum raising pretty much every other position if you want. But uh, blind versus blind, you're giving them way too good a price if you're, if you're just min raising. So they can start calling with fucking like 6-3 off. All right. Dude, this 2x speed's so good. 5x speed's too much. Oh, God. Slow down. Slow down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Back we go. I thought it was just going to even out. Okay, so we, we defend the 10-4 the suited to it. That is completely good. Especially in tournaments, you want to be making these kind of calls. Um, in cash games, it's like kind of marginal because there's no ante, but I don't expect you to know that, so whatever. Mm -hmm. um, after this call, I am going to probably give you some homework to just play more cash games and see what your results are after a certain amount of time. So when everyone checks around here, we have... Obviously, basically nothing, um, but there is one crucial point that could help us to win this hand. Can you guess what that point is? Five. <laughs> so there's, there's one thing that is very helpful for us in this hand, uh, and it's something to do with the board. Uh, yeah, I just said that we need a five. Uh, that that is true, but okay. So we're talking about we're talking about kind of range advantage. So when we're calling out the big blinds, um, we can have four five off. We could have seven six off. We could have six three suited, seven three suited. All of these different types of hands. Other people can't have those hands. Um, the small blind can still have like seven sixes and threes, um, but the other two have also checked. So it's very unlikely that anyone has anything. So. Um, the first thing that would be coming to my head right now, and I've, I've watched a tiny bit of your stream and I think this is like the reason I'm saying this, cause I think this is something you could take away is that when there are situations where we don't have very good hand, but we know everyone else also doesn't have a very good hand, it's probably a good situation to start bluffing no matter how many people are in the, well, I mean, if there's 10 people in the pot, like eight people in the pot, it's not, not worth doing it, but like four easy, we can easily get through three people. Um, so we don't get a chance to do that. This guy bets four. What do you think his range is when he's betting here? Uh, probably he just like me has uh, some gut shot. What else? Uh, maybe three, maybe six. I don't think he has jack. Yeah, yeah, it seems reasonable. Um, so small. It looks like uh, he has like some lower middle pair so he wants just to know if someone else okay so here's here's what we're going to do for all, all of the following hands that, that are going to come up i'm going to ask you what their range is and you've got to be able to do that very quickly you've got to be able to say okay i think he has like pocket eights a seven a six maybe a gut shot maybe an open end or something like that okay. um that has to be instant in your minds when you're playing poker and then the next stage has to be how do i exploit that what do I do against that kind of that kind of range? Mm -hmm. um, so, Helena, what do you think we could do in this spot? Helena says, "Raise, raise." <laughs> um, okay, so against a raise, what do you think this person would do if he has something like a three? If we if we make it like twenty five cents here? Oh, he folks. Yeah. What What do you think he does if if he has like a six? Uh, he falls also. Should, yeah. Should fold. So basically, I could say that for almost his entire range, and he'll probably just fold it all. So um, this is a really cool spot to just raise. Um, we can have all the straights, all the sets, apart from jacks. We can have loads of two pairs, and uh, 
there's not much that he can do. And the other the other two people that have a the best hand they're going to have is Ace Jack. So against a bet and a raise, they'll probably have to fold at some point, especially if we bet the river. Just calling, I don't like it. Uh, the gut shot, even though we're getting odds, it it's not worth calling because uh, first of all, might not even be good if we hit our five. Eight nine is also a straight. We're not even drawing to the nuts. And uh, this these two people could also raise, so we might just be burning four cents there. Uh, when we when the river comes an ace, and this guy checks, we know he hasn't got much. Uh, do you do you think you would consider bluffing here normally? Uh, I, I've been thinking about this, but I didn't because I thought that some of them should have it for sure because someone could like have it to the river. Mm. I think I think that if this guy, um, can you see my mouse, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, cool. I think if this guy had an ace, he'd probably bet the river. Uh, this guy, the only ace he can really have is like ace jack, maybe ace six. Um, it's just very unlikely that either of them have an ace actually. And I, th I think just with like a, a two thirds pop bet, we'll probably, probably get enough folds from both of them. So the, the concept takeaway is just like think real hard about their range, but you obviously you have to do it quite quickly in game. Uh, the fact that he bets is, means he probably had ace jack or something like that. Um, and don't be, don't be scared to bluff multiple people. Mm -hmm. Um, on the flip side to that. I know that when playing low stakes, people tend not to fold, uh, especially in the early stages of tournament. So there are, there are most, oh, that's a very loose open. Uh, don't, don't open that from the cutoff. Uh, you can almost open it from the button, but not really. Mm -hmm. um, so I know in the low stakes tournaments, people tend not to fold too much. Um, so in most situations, we're going we're gonna to try not to bluff too much but there are some situations where we just know no one has top pair no one has second pair and in those situations we can just go for it mm -hmm. um and that that's one of the crucial things that you'll find in tournaments is the difference between uh, an okay tournament player and a very good tournament player is the very good tournament player knows when to not bluff but when he needs to or she needs to they they can just pedal to the metal and that probably doesn't translate to ukraine but like go as fast as you can bluff and loads and loads of hands and take down the blinds taking down the antis and you know see bet bluffing triple barrel bluffing all of these things and that is what makes a, a really crushing tournament player so if you ever want to practice bluffing two nl streets two nl cash games are a very good place to start doing that um, i actually usually say to a lot of my students when you're playing cash games to begin with, you should uh, you should really be as aggressive as possible. You want to be practicing all of those big bluffs, all of, the, all of those triple barrel bluffs, because then you start getting an intuition for which ones work and which ones don't. And you start feeling like, okay, when I bet this size, people start folding like third pair. When I bet this size, people are folding their top pair if the flush comes in, you know, things like that. Um, so, this is probably knowing, knowing you somewhat is probably something you got to work on is being, being a fucking monster, being someone that's just going to take people to the streets and be like, fuck you, bro. I don't think you got it, son. Come at me. I'm almost Russian. What's up? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Ukrainians out there. <laughs> um, okay. So, here, when he defends, the, the first thing we're going to say, we're not going to say what his entire range is. You know, he can have like four or five of hearts. We don't care what, about that kind of stuff. But what kind of hands can he have that would call a bet? Very quickly. Uh, his hands? Yeah. Um, then Jack, uh, nine, nine, uh, eight, uh, some <laughs> cards okay, of... Okay, slow, slow down, slow down. So instead <laughs> of going, here's a little trick. Instead of going through all of the hands individually... You can just say straight draws, uh -huh. yeah. 9x, queen x, 3x, plus draws. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you do the next one. So he calls, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, okay, so now we have to think, okay, do we want to check or bet? So it's, it's, it's a close spot. Um, what... Okay, this is actually kind of a complicated one, but 
let's say he has a straight draw. What would we want to do against a straight draw? Uh, I want to, because I have only a second pair and no draws for me. I just want him to fold any of his hands. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say that you, you want him to fold like Jack-10 um, or you want him to call because you're ahead of Jack-10. Um, he could also have maybe like King Jack, especially maybe with a club. So there's a lot, a lot of straight draws here. I think betting against them would be best. Okay, what, what if he has something like King Queen? What, what would you want to do against that? Um, even King Queen uh, can fold here sometimes. No? This is something that Helen has uh, ran into a lot in her career. What is the mistake that Alona is making right here? Uh, that is one of them, but there's something oh, specific about. Value okay, did you hear her? No. All right, lean into the microphone. Uh, turning value hands into bluffs are my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Dan, I don't, I don't get the first word. You got this. Turning value hands into bluffs. Turning, okay. Yeah, okay. Turning value hands into bluffs, and she's right. It's something that I've seen a lot of students do, and it really confuses me because I, I never had that that tendency. Um, but some, sometimes people are like, oh, yes, a flop second pair. Here we go, boys. I'll make him fold top pair. I was like, no, no, you, <laughs> you, you don't need to do that, man. He's, what if he hasn't got top pair? And it's really hard to make people fold top pair. Um, so yeah, my, my strategy in the low, low stakes streets is definitely don't try and bluff people off top pair um, ever. <laughs> and, or almost ever, really. Sometimes if like four clubs came in, then you might be able to do that. Um, but another strategy is like when you have showdown value, uh, do you know what showdown value is in English? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Um, when you have showdown value, there's very rarely times where you want to turn that into a bluff, especially on like the turn, um, and especially with something like second pair. So again, if you had king queen, we'd just be happy to check it down and lose, you know, we'll just be like, fuck it, let's do this. Um, if he has a flush, obviously, we're not going to try and bluff him off that. We'll check it down. And this is a quite a complicated situation. So you can have all those straight draws. He might be able to, he might have something like ace-10 with the ace of clubs. There's a bunch of different hands he can have. I don't know where the betting or checking is best. So it doesn't really matter what you do. There are no mistakes you can do here unless you open fold. Congratulations. You didn't make a mistake. <laughs> this is good. Times two. Okay. So here with ace-king-5 rainbow... What kind of hands could he call a bet with? Could he call back? What kind of hands could he call a bet with? Uh, call a bet. Um, A6, King X. There's one more, one more type of hand that you can have. Uh, straight draws. There we go. Yep. Nailed it. So against those kind of, that kind of range, what do we want to do? I bet it like thirty-five percent, but I think we have to bet more. Okay, so I would say the crucial thing here is that we we don't want his straight draws to fold, because those straight draws only have four outs against us, plus maybe a backdoor flush draw. Um, so let's say he has like jack ten of diamonds. Oh, sorry. Let's say jack ten of clubs. What kind of sizing do you think he will call? Mm, thirty-five percent. He will call. 35. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so that, that, that's the kind of thing you want to be doing in every single hand. You want to be like, okay, what can you have and how do I get value from it? Or how do I bluff it out or, you know, whatever the situation calls for. So we think he can have an ace, which, you know, we lose to most of his ace that call here, or he can have a king or he can have a straight draw. So now we get to the turn. Things have complicated a bit. We think he can still have an ace. So, you know, ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, 10. He can still have king, queen, king, jack, king, 10. And he can have jack, 10. And he can have queen, jack, and queen, 10. A lot of shit going out there. Um, but range is already pretty narrow. So what, what do you think might be best? Um, I think it uh, might be best to bet uh, more than half of pot and to understand now if he has something or not. Helena, what do you think? Check. Helena thinks check. Um, very uncertainly but yeah check checks definitely the best one and the reason the reason checks checks good here is that it makes his hands turn very face up so if he has one pair then 
he will check because it'll be like king jack queen jack stuff like that but if he has two pair something like ace queen which has us drawing dead or a straight jack 10 um he will end up betting so the cool thing about checking in this situation is that if he bets we can just fold our hands even though it's top bet um because his range only can only consists if he bets the turn probably of let's say ace jack or better um, so by betting here, he can still just call with something like Jack 10. He can still call with King Queen, um, Ace 10, Ace Jack, things like that. And we we're actually burning a, a bit of money here. Did you, did you follow all that? What? Did you, uh, did you understand all that? Yeah. Cool. This language barrier ain't too bad. I was expecting, I was expecting it to be a lot worse. <laughs> All right, cool. So now we've rid of two pair and we need to think, what are we trying to get value from? So what kind of hands are we targeting? Um, we are trying to get value from Ace-10, Ace-Jack, uh, some three draws which didn't work till now. And from like Ace-Jack, I, I told the red like this hands, this kind of hands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I'd say we're trying to get value from ace, ace, jack, ace, 10, maybe king, queen, if he has that. Um, what kind of size do you think they would call? Uh, I think I bet it uh, too much. I had to bet uh, smaller, like uh, maybe 10 cents or 8 cents. So they're interested to see and they pay even if they have like ace, jack, ace, 10. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. We look very strong. Just even though even a two and L player will know that we we look quite strong here when we've raised early position, bet the flop, bet the turn, and bet the river. So I think uh, going for a smaller size feels better. And in these situations, for you and for people at home, there's not much more you can do than just feel what they'll call. It's really hard to quantify that. It's really hard to put it into an exact amount. Um, so you just have to play fuck loads of hands millions of hands online and then you'll start to get a really good intuition for what people are going to call and what people are going to fall to all right so we've opened a6 suited and uh what are, what are we doing going to do on this flop bet 35 persons yeah yeah so in cash games you can generally bet a bit bigger i'd usually say 50 percent here um but in tournaments, you, you want to be betting around 35% as a C-bet anyway. Um, oh my God. So in tournaments, you want to be betting smaller. So 35% is good for tournaments. But in cash games, you want to be betting bigger um, mm -hmm. just because stacks are deeper. Okay. Um, it, it, it's very situation specific, but that's just like a general rule. All right. So he calls. What do you think his range is? Uh, he can have, uh, because he's in big blind, he can have uh, any like uh, straight draws. He can have also any flash draws, uh, like any cards. His range is very like... Wide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get you, man. We cool. <laughs> so with uh, range, what, what do you think we could do to exploit that? Um, I don't know. As far as uh, like flush uh, close, and I still have I still have only gut shot. I still, I think I have to check here. What do you think, Helena? Uh, they, like, they're gonna channel the river as well. You can set them up a lot of one pair hands. Yeah, so Helena said, if you're going to barrel the river, so if you're going to bet turn and bet the river, we can fold him off most of his range. And I completely agree with Helena. Um, if we say bet the turn and then bet the river, he's probably going to call with on the turn like 5-3, 6-5, maybe like ace-5 with a club, maybe just ace-5 without a club. Um, lots, lots of those different hands. And then we can set up a river bet where let's say the river is something like a jack or a queen, a king um for even just like a nine we can or a club we can then put in the third barrel and fold him off most of his hands that he has in his range mm -hmm. um <laughs> <laughs> so uh, helena what kind of sizing would you go on the turn here there's a little trick that i've taught you uh you can go small then massive but 
There we go. She knows it, dude. That's sick. She knows. So a little, little trick here to look out for is that if we bet kind of smallish, say, let's say seven cents on the turn and then go big on the river, it does a really cool thing. And what it does is it says, hey, dude, you got a flush? And if the answer is yes, he's like, I'll raise my flush. But if we were to bet like, you know, 15 cents here, he might just call with his flush because, you know, he's trapping. Mm -hmm. um, but when, when people have, you know, let's say six, seven of clubs here or, you know, king, queen of clubs and you bet just seven cents, they're scared you're going to check behind on the river. So they're just like, oh, okay, I'll raise now. Um, so a really, really cool, cool trick on these draw heavy boards where you want a triple barrel is go smallish. So seven cents. And let's say there's now 28 cents in the pot and then just bomb it, go like 24 cents on the river. And he, he's probably not going to have a flush. He's probably only going to have one pair and he's probably going to fold absolutely everything like a little bitch. <laughs> was that me? <laughs> <laughs> that was so intense. Uh, All right. We've gone for the min bet. Why? Uh, just, oh, I don't know. <laughs> the only correct answer you can say in this situation is because fuck GTO. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is not how I would choose to personally fuck GTO. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that is the exact amount of size that I would go to if I was trying to get a call from like his range. So <laughs> that, that is setting a big blind on fire. Um, yeah, shame on you, but we're moving on. <laughs> I'm glad you're the kind of person I can just, uh, insult your whole poker game and you're just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Helen is the same. 